Hello, it's nice to be with you again on video. It's also nice to see some of you around campus these days. I have to tell you that I am so proud of all the members of the IUP family, of you for taking the challenges we face in stride, being patient with each other, doing the right things to keep each other safe, having compassion, understanding, and really helping each other out. These are tough times, but we're getting through it together, and I thank you for that. I do need to ask you for your continued help as we work together to keep the IUP community, but also the community around us safe and well during these times of pandemic. Remember that you can be sick and not show any symptoms, not feel sick. So it's so important to continue those things like wearing the mask, washing your hands, and avoiding large gatherings. When you can do that, you make sure that you and your friends are safe, but it goes beyond you and your friends. You make sure that others around you, your neighbors, members of the community, someone's grandmother and grandfather, are staying safe and healthy as well. Thank you for taking these basic steps. They make a difference. Please keep doing them and always be careful and take care of each other. You may have heard that we're changing our testing strategy to align with current CDC guidelines. So if someone has been exposed to someone who has tested positive, we will be doing tests at the um, Health Services Center here on campus for those that have been exposed but don't appear to be sick yet. So check that out. And speaking of testing, I'm very, very proud of the continued partnership between Indiana Regional Medical Center and IUP, and particularly you want to call out Dr. Barathon, chair of the biology department, who spearheaded a wonderful work that has our folks doing tests for COVID-19 at IRMC. It's a great partnership, and it's making a difference for us, for the community, and for the world. It's a model for everyone. Things are still going on on campus, great things. And, and just this past Wednesday, a couple of days ago, as I re record this, we did the groundbreaking for the new science building. That would be Kopchak Hall, named after John Jay and Shar Kopchak, two alum of IUP. We were able to have them with us, along with alum Tim and Deb Saika, who are also key parts of getting that building to come into place. It's going to be a wonderful facility. You'll be seeing the construction, or you've already seen that on campus. That will continue. And we hope to have faculty moving into that facility in the summer of 2023 with um, students able to learn and grow there starting in fall of 2023. Great facility, lots of great labs. I just want to highlight one thing here, and that is the labs will have windows. There will be opportunities for all of us, just as we go through the building, to watch science being done. And that's very, very exciting. It's a great facility, and we look forward to it opening. And I hope you'll check out the construction while it's going on. I um, know that we're sort of missing some of the usual activities, but I want you to know that Family Weekend and Homecoming are going on virtually. Actually, this week on Thursday the 24th, we kicked off Family Weekend with some great activities, and there are some more of those coming on Saturday, um, September 26th. You could look at the webpage for some of those specifics. And then we'll kick off Homecoming week with a spirit week that will start with a great performance by our own marching band invitation only for families and friends of band members but you can catch the live stream and i hope you'll do that the band has been working hard to be ready for this great event we'll be doing things to keep together to um, enjoy the spirit of iup even though we're in these challenging times so check it out I'm also really pleased with um, Dr. Gwen Torges and all the folks that worked with her to make sure we did Constitution Day again this year with a live stream reading of the Constitution. And then we followed that up by a six o'clock series with the Founding Fathers commenting on issues of today and their views of those things. It was a great event. I also want to make you aware of an upcoming event um, Chancellor Greenstein will be here virtually for a visit on October 2nd, and there will be uh, an open public forum, and I'll join the Chancellor for that. The title of the forum is The Future of System Redesign. That'll be Friday, October 2nd at 2.30 p.m. Look for the details coming in the future. 
We continue to be concerned about diversity and equity on all of our campuses, and we're in the middle of a great deal of programming on civil rights, policing, criminal justice system, diversity initiatives, and all sorts of professional development opportunities so we can all learn to be better at uh, welcoming everyone and valuing their work and helping them succeed. Um, I'll just call out a couple of things here. Members of the anthropology department here at IUP, um, including Dr. Ben Ford, Dr. Abigail Adams, and Dr. Andrea Palmiotto, are presenting a, a panel discussion about the definition of race. What does that really mean? Where did it come from? And that's on October 7th in Elkin Hall from 3.30 to 5 p.m. Students can attend in person up to the seating limit and via Zoom if you would prefer. Stay tuned for more details on that. Um, we're also really pleased that Young Alumni Achievement Award winner Justin Brown, a great guy and a 2015 graduate of IUP's Student Affairs in Higher Education program, will offer, and I love this title, UGG, not another diversity presentation, He'll be doing that in October to presidents of our student organizations, to individual students, and to faculty. It's the first time that this training's been offered at IUP, and I'm really excited about what we can learn and how it can shift our paradigm regarding racism, addressing prejudices and stereotypes. Uh, Justin will do a great job, and his program for faculty will help focus on that classroom interaction and dynamic that's so important for all of us. And I would just want to thank the more than 110 faculty and staff who in August took part in our difficult dialogues, training, and workshops. Um, it's a great program that helps us all learn how to have difficult conversations with respect and to learn from each other. It's a wonderful program. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for continuing that work around the university. I continue to be so proud of all that we're doing to help each other during these challenging times. And I want to thank you for your support of what we're now calling the Student Assistance Fund. We, we're calling that the Emergency Response Fund. You and others, alumni, students, faculty, staff, have donated over $290,000 to the fund, which is there to help students who are struggling, who are challenged by our circumstances, and we're using those funds to help those students continue their IEP education and be successful. Thank you for doing that. In closing, thank you for all you're doing. Thank you for your perseverance through these challenging times. I encourage you to keep doing all the right things that you're already doing. Keep it up. Wash your hands. Wear the mask. Stay involved in the activities around us, but stay six feet apart, and we'll keep each other safe. Thank you. If you're struggling, reach out. We're here to help you. Talk to your friends, but make sure you let us know. We can, we can help you get through these challenging times when you're really struggling, and I so know some of us are. We can do this together, and I'm looking forward to a great rest of fall semester. Let's go Hawks.